You have to always, you know, I do it a lot anyway, as you probably heard, wash your hands. <laughs> I try and bail out as much as possible with the sneezing. We're all infected. I had a man come up to me a week ago. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And I said, how are you doing? He said, fine, fine. He, he hugs me. Kiss. I said, are you well? He says, no. <laughs> he said, I have the worst fever and the worst flu. And he's hugging and kissing me. So I said, excuse me. I went and I started washing my hands. What? But the CDC, Jenner told me. I just will get a better, hmm. better handle on, on the whole situation. Fortunately, from what I understand, you know, <clears throat> it is contagious, but the death rate is, is pretty low. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I understand the fear. Yeah. yeah, well, we can see you still have a cough. What do the doctors say about your own condition moving forward as we wrap this up? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Get some of that. <laughs> they said, um, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I got tested twice, uh, negative both times. Uh, the cough, probably just uh, nerves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being on TV. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Neon Realist. There you saw it. You're, you're probably one of the cringiest moments having to do with the coronavirus that's happened here in the United States. It happened live on the air yesterday at Fox News. Frank Wachinski is a, uh, he's a Pennsylvania man who was quarantined in San Diego with his three-year-old daughter. Now, they, uh, they attended a memorial service in Wuhan, uh, China, where his father-in-law died from coronavirus, and they believe that's uh, where they received exposure to, uh, to uh, the virus. So, Frank Wachinski, he's actually lived in China for over 15 years. Now, about 10 of them he lived actually in Wuhan with his wife. She's a, a Chinese citizen. That's where she's from. So yeah, the father-in-law died. And Frank, I guess, was evac with his daughter, finally. Uh, they wound up at the United States Marine Corps Air Station Miramar in uh, Southern California. Now, this is when the now familiar game of coronavirus musical chairs began. Uh, Frank Wachinski and his daughter, they were initially separated, kept in isolation at a uh, children's hospital, looks like for a period of about three or four days. And uh, so after that few days, they got out of the isolation. They got dumped back into the uh, general uh, evacuee population at Miramar. The uh, daughter, Annabelle, though, she coughed in front of uh, some of the staff there at Miramar, so they made them go to the medical tent. The medical tent called the CDC, and uh, CDC said, you know what? put them back in isolation at the children's hospital. So another three days pass in isolation for uh, Frank and his daughter Annabelle before their tests for coronavirus, they came back negative. So they were let out and eventually they were allowed to go home to Pennsylvania even. And uh, Frank and Annabelle, you know, the rest is history. They go on Fox News there where Frank says, hey, I'm all better now. And he's coughing through the entire interview. He's... uh drinking from his daughter's water bottle and giving her a swig from his, uh, I guess, his backwash spit, apparently. Hey, it's fine. Just nerves from being on TV, Frank says. Sure, Frank. Uh, CDC, I think we need a retest over there. Um, Frank's case, though, it's it's anecdotal, maybe. He could be right. Maybe it's just nerves from being on TV. I guess we'll find out soon enough, but how about the case of uh, Shimon Dahan, though? You see, Shimon Dahan, he's an Israeli citizen who just returned from quarantine in Japan after he was said to have recovered from getting uh, the coronavirus aboard the cruise ship SS Diamond Princess. That's docked in uh, Yokohama. Now, Shimon Dahan, he was released from the hospital in Tokyo on Thursday and uh, flew home to Israel on two commercial flights. Turkish Airlines flight TK-53 from Tokyo to Istanbul and Turkish Airlines flight TK-784 from Istanbul to Tel Aviv, which landed in Israel at about 8.55 local time yesterday, Friday. And Israel, naturally, they checked Dahan out. And of course, guess what? 
they diagnosed him as having the coronavirus again and tossed him back into another 14-day quarantine. Now, all passengers who are on either flight, because uh, Shimon Dahan tested positive, now they've been required by the Israel's health ministry, they've got to undergo a home quarantine of their own for the next 14 days, and they've got to report to the ministry. So there's a case of someone who was declared recovered from COVID-19, able he was able to return to public life, and then subsequently it was determined to have the disease still present in him. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly disturbing because Japan, they report their own case of a coronavirus patient who recovered and became reinfected. On Wednesday, the Osaka prefectural government in Japan, they confirmed that a woman who works as a tour bus guide who was believed to have fully recovered from the disease. She tested positive for coronavirus for the second time after she developed a sore throat and uh, and had chest pains. Now this woman, this isn't some elderly person. She's said to be only in her 40s, so not some sickly old lady uh, getting hit with symptoms for the second time. She first tested positive back in January, w- over a month ago. She fully recovered and was let out of the hospital on February 1st. Wednesday was February 26th, people. That woman tested positive for coronavirus and was sick again from it 25 days after they let her out of the hospital. That's more than three weeks. Just three days short of two full quarantine periods of uh, 14 days. So let's firm this up. In the case of the Fox News Koofer, Frank Wachinski, he's just coughing after being let out. I mean, could be nothing really for all we know, but it just looks bad until we know more. Can't draw any conclusions there. In the case of the Israeli, Shimon Dahan, who got sick on the Diamond Princess, that could be just a bad test or human error, right? I mean, he was let go on a Thursday and uh, retested the next day in Israel on a Friday and came back positive. Maybe the test in Japan just showed a false negative or just somebody screwed up uh, with a clerical error. Plausible. So how do we explain the Japanese uh, tour bus uh, lady? She got sick more than a month ago in January. She had the disease and fully recovered by the end of January. She went home on the first day of February. Here we are. You know, tomorrow is the month of March. She's sick again. 25 days after being declared recovered from from the uh, COVID-19 with symptoms apparently bad enough to require hospitalization, she's once again in the hospital with this sickness. You know, Philip Tierno Jr., he's a professor of microbiology and pathology at New York University. He speculates that once you have the infection, it could remain dormant with uh, minimal uh, symptoms and then you get an exacerbation if it finds its way into the lungs. We're all infected. So what about the place where they have tens of thousands of coronavirus patients? China. Now, I first mentioned in a video, in my previous video, that they've been seeing these uh, recovered patient infections a lot. Guangdong province in China is reporting that they found 14% of patients who've recovered from having the SARS-CoV-2 virus, you know, they're testing positive for it again. That's about one person in seven. So imagine if China claims to have over 70,000 cases, you know, of the SARS coronavirus 2. Even if every single one of them were somehow miraculously to recover and not infect a single new person, there'd be at least 10,000 new cases running free in the wild, so to speak, ready to spark a second wave of infections, even worse than the first one, since it'd be starting instead of that one person to start it all off, it'd have 10,000 uh, patient zeros. I mean, this nightmare potential, uh, it, it, it caused China to, to order everyone in Wuhan who'd recovered from the disease to go just mandatory, you gotta go back into quarantine for another 14 days. So this SARS coronavirus too, it's increasingly looking like the gift that's just going to keep on giving because so this video 
It's the follow-up to my previous video, 28 Days from, from uh, Wednesday, where I introduced the news to you about China reporting these reinfections. So as we sit here on, on a Saturday, we have confirmation of that with these cases in Japan and Israel. That unless the, these three of the most technologically advanced countries on earth are wrong, China, Japan, and Israel, I'm going to pretty much say that the coronavirus reinfection thing is a confirmed uh, phenomenon. You know, that's also the opinion, that's not just my opinion, that's the opinion of Alan Cheng. He's a professor of infectious diseases and epi epidemiology at uh, Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. And Cheng claims, I would say that it is less about if it is possible that reinfection can occur than how often it occurs. So the question now is, not if it happens, but what's the mechanism? How is this happening? Is the virus biphasic maybe? Uh, that's to say, does it lie dormant before it creates new symptoms in the patient? Or, you know, like, uh, I guess chickenpox would be an example where you, you could have chickenpox and then you could get it again. And they, I guess they call that shingles or is something else going on here. Now, a friend of mine who's taken a keen interest in this topic, he sent me a couple of preprint studies that present a fascinating possibility. Now, remember, this, this is brand new cutting edge stuff this coronavirus has only been widely known about a little over two months so these papers haven't even had a chance to be peer-reviewed yet so keep in mind that they represent preliminary reports that they can't be taken as conclusive or you know don't pass this on to others as if these are established facts like like this is you know gospel or anything so keep that in mind for right now it's just an unproven and yet to be certified theory Basically, the theory is that the SARS coronavirus 2 could be hitching a ride with uh, Prevotella bacteria. And there, there is a kind of virus uh, called bacteriophages that rather than infect animals, they infect bacteria. Now, there, these things are basically everywhere on the planet, at least anywhere you, that you could possibly find bacteria. And the best estimate that I was able to find is that there's a 10 to the 31st power uh, bacteriophages that exist on the planet. Basically more than every other organism known to exist on Earth combined, including bacteria. Anyway, this theory, it doesn't posit that SARS coronavirus 2 is a bacteriophage, at least not technically. It can't be said that it's infecting the bacteria. It's more like a symbiotic relationship, if I'm reading these papers right. It's like a tag team. You know, they're, they're tag teaming you like like something out of uh, WWE wrestling. I mean, part of my lack of deep understanding, if, if I'm relaying this to you incorrectly, is I'm not a microbiologist. The pre papers say that ENCOV, which we believe came from bats originally, but can clearly infect humans, they speculate that it, it has receptors that can also bind to the Prevotella bacteria, which are f found in humans. Basically, they reside in your gut, really throughout your gastrointestinal tract. So, especially if the patient has poor oral hygiene, you can find it in and around the mouth. I mean, hell, according to the article I checked on uh, Wikipedia, they're even found in, in vaginas. So, yeah, there's that too. Anyway, they're more common in non-Western populations, people that consume plant-rich diets. A study of gut bacteria that was done of uh, children in Burkina Faso in uh, Africa, they found that 53% of their gut bacteria were Prevotella. The study found that in age-matched European children, the Prevotella bacteria were absent. You know, the study found that people whose long-term diet uh, was rich in protein, like meat and animal fats, you know, as most Westerners uh, tend to eat, that they don't uh, have Prevotella, but instead they have a different kind of bacteria called bacteria bacteroids. Now the exception for Westerners would obviously be vegetarians and those who are on a Mediterranean diet, you know, stuff rich in fruits and vegetables. They'll, they will also have Prevotella bacteria. So with the coronavirus binding to those bacteria, that would mean that it could become airborne via those bacteria. Remember, they're in the oral and nasal cavities. They could survive longer if they're inside the bacteria, if this theory is correct. So check out this scenario. You get infected with the coronavirus. 
It's inside your cells and organs, what have you. You have the infection. You beat the disease, you feel better. But guess what? Your immune system doesn't attack the coronaviruses that are inside your Prevotella bacteria within your body. Those are always there, those bacteria, and the virus is hiding inside them basically like a Trojan horse. So in theory, once you've gotten your coronavirus, even once you've beaten it, you're carrying with you now a reservoir full of coronavirus in your naturally occurring gut bacteria in your gastrointestinal tract. It's in your throat, your mouth, your nose. You're still a carrier. You know, it, it and it'd show up, it, you know, whenever you sneeze, whenever you cough, whenever you take a shit. So the thing where you, you saw where they're finding coronavirus in pet dogs, for example, which obviously everyone is saying is not possible that the, you know, the coronavirus doesn't infect dogs. Well, the dogs can't be infected with the coronavirus, but if this theory is true, you know, it, it would show how a dog can test positive for coronavirus. It doesn't infect the dog. It would infect the gastrointestinal tract's native bacteria. Anyway, it's a crazy theory. And really, as far as I could tell, a virus that can infect animals, humans in this case, somehow mutating to be able to bind itself to bacteria also, it's beginning to border on extremely <laughs> unlikely or at least that end of the probability scale. So at, at that point, if this theory is correct, you really do have to start to wonder if this thing was deliberately engineered. So anyway, like I said, none of this is proven. Just a couple of papers that have uh, not yet gone through peer review. And I only present that because, frankly, the disease is too new to really have uh, much of anything peer reviewed yet. And I thought you guys would get a kick out of hearing one of the more interesting ideas floating around in the scientific community regarding coronavirus and a possible explanation how people who beat the disease can be carrying it uh, and get it again a second time how it could present itself in in dogs when everyone says that uh, it's impossible for dogs to be infected by the virus and how this virus why it, it can remain viable for so long on surfaces and why it, it's it spread so easily um you know in the, in the in this case, we pretty much are sure that it's uh, airborne to some degree. But, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. That's all for this Neo Realist. If you want to help the channel, do me a favor. Hit like for this video. Leave a comment below. Mash down the subscribe button if you're not already subbed to the channel. You got to click on the notification bell beside it. You got to put it on the all setting to keep up with newer content. If you want to contribute directly to the channel, toss your hard-earned uh, dollars or shekels into the tip jar. Follow the links below to Patreon, Subscribe Star, or PayPal. Or if you're watching this on BitChute, you can just click on the green tip pledge button on the video player. Most importantly, though, thanks for watching. We're all infected.